Hello, I'm David Anderson, and welcome to the guide for Chapter 5 Expect Delays for Dead Space 3 on the impossible difficulty which takes place on the Terra Nova. At the start, you have the opportunity to upgrade your suit and pick up a lot of loot around the place. To activate the power, you have to solve a fuse box puzzle where you have to turn the indicator around a circle and find the three blue triangles. Don't rotate too quickly and don't activate the red triangles. The first enemies you encounter are in the cargo room. You can use telekinesis to throw the explosive tanks at the tentacle enemies that spawn, but you don't have to. Once you've taken care of the four enemies that come at you, turn right and turn around the corner for some more loot. Once you stomp the loot, an enemy will come at you from behind, so be sure to get ready for him and use stasis if required. After you go down the ladder near where you took care of the tentacle enemies, three necromores walk towards you around the corner ahead. Stay back and take care of them. In this cargo room, there are a lot of loot boxes that you have to use telekinesis for to get them. Aim at them and activate telekinesis, which will bring the boxes towards you. When you go up the ramp, a necromorph with bone spikes comes out of the wall in front of you. Shortly afterwards, another comes from behind you. Turn around again, and another tentacle enemy comes out of the same wall ahead. Keep going up the ladder. A necromorph with an explosive sack climbs out of a vent ahead. These are easiest to take care of by shooting the glowing sack, which kills them instantly. When you go around the corner the necromorph was close to, two more enemies come at you. One more with an explosive sack and another walker. After taking care of those, turn around and another sack necromorph will be coming at you. If he is too close to you, don't shoot the sack, otherwise you will be damaged. In the next room, you encounter crawlers that bring corpses back to life. They die in one hit, so be sure to shoot as many of them as possible before they enter a body. There are only two bodies in the room, which you'll have to take care of since they are inhabited in the cutscene. It is best to use a fast automatic gun to take care of the crawlers. When you exit this room, more crawlers will come out of the vent ahead. In the fourth station, there are two big necromorphs who have more health. There will also be more crawlers that get the bodies back up. If you are being overwhelmed, you can retreat through the door to stop enemies coming at you. There are more enemies near the shuttle control panel. More crawlers and one necromorph drops down from the ceiling. Shortly after, another will come at you from the right. When you try to activate the Terra Nova train service, you find out that something is blocking it. The door to the left opens. After you go up the ladder, there will be a few more crawlers. Around the corner is an enemy in the wall which spawns crawlers. To take this enemy out, the plasma cutter is best, but you can use any weapon. Take off its tentacles to kill it. It is best to focus on it first, and then the crawlers and necromorphs it has created. But if any get too close to you, be sure to take care of them. After going down the elevator, you get into the control station for the train service. You have to kill the cargo, which involves solving a small puzzle where you have to fit together two pieces of cargo so that they compact. Look for any unusual shapes on the side of the cargo pieces that have a counter shape on the other piece of cargo. For the first two pieces, turn the left piece of cargo so that the round corner is at the bottom left. Turn the right piece of cargo so that the box with the do not stack written on it is at the top left corner. For the next two pieces, leave the left one alone and turn the right so that the yellow part sticks out to the middle. Next, the right cargo piece has to be facing the long side of the cutout triangle to the left. The yellow part of the piece of cargo has to be, once again, sticking out to the right. The next two pieces you can bring together straight away. For the second to last, turn the right cargo piece so that the cutout triangle faces to the left and the left cargo piece so that the triangle sticking out faces to the right. For the last two pieces, the right cargo piece's yellow part has to be sticking out to the left and the right cargo piece's yellow part has to be sticking upwards. When you turn around, there are going to be several spitters that come at you. They can come out of any of the vents around the place. There are five of them. One on the roof above the platform up top. Then there are two on the walls near the same platform and two below on either side of the control station you use to clear the rails. Check each place and listen for necromorphs near you. When you open the elevator, another spitter is on the other side. Slowly approach the elevator and open it as soon as you can. Start retreating straight away and shoot a necromorph as soon as you can see it. After the elevator ride, you go along some corridors. One spitter necromorph tries to kill you, but he is far ahead of you. Shortly after, you go back into the cargo hold, which you were in at the start of the chapter. Again, there is a lot of loot around the place. After going down the ladder, a regenerated necromorph comes out of the tank. You can't kill it. Instead, you stasis on it and run up the same ramp as before. Two normal necromorphs are around the corner. After going up the ladder, the regenerating necromorph pops out of the vent ahead. Once again, use stasis on it and go past it. 
A little later on, the next time I encountered the regenerated necromorph, I accidentally let him get too close and had to restart from checkpoint. Instead of going back a little, I was put at the entrance to the force station. But the easiest way to get past it at that time is to go back into the previous room and use stasis to slow it down. The force station part is fairly difficult and it will be hard not to be hit at least once. First, go to the control station, take care of the enemy there and call the shuttle. The regenerating necromorph will come out of a vent nearby. Wait for it to be close to you, then use stasis on it. An enemy will drop down from above up the stairs ahead, which you can easily take care of. Now you have to play Ring Around the Rosie with the regenerating necromorph. One more enemy will drop down from the roof. Shortly after that, use stasis on the regenerating necromorph again and use the stasis recharge station nearby to regenerate it instantly. Two more enemies will drop down nearby as well as another regenerating necromorph entering the equation. Use stasis on the latter straight away. It will be important to deal with the runner necromorphs, otherwise they will jump on you and make it very difficult to evade the other necromorphs. Now just keep running around and try to avoid the necromorphs. Sometimes it is difficult since they might block both ways ahead. Once the shuttle arrives, enter it quickly and the necromorphs can't follow you. Now you can choose to complete an optional part of chapter 5. It has a fairly good and dramatic story and it is pretty interesting. Also, there is a big loot stash waiting for you at the end. I've already produced a guide for the optional part of chapter 5, which is on screen right now. Click on it to be taken there in the new window. When you go to the aft section, you have reached the end of chapter 5. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time.